We are now on our third week of our Learning at Home program for Earth and Life Science and we are now on our second quarter. Before we start with our discussion video, let us have first a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, being the true source of light and wisdom, grant us the grace of understanding, of knowledge, and enlightenment of mind for us to truly understand the lessons which are designed for us by our teachers. With love and compassion, we humbly pray that you will continue to heal our land against this pandemic that we are facing right now. Guide us, O Lord, unworthy as we are. Lord our Father, make us your servant to become servant to others. Make us to become more in love for us to give love to others. And Lord, continue to make us humbly knowledgeable of our chosen expertise that we become share of this knowledge to others. This we ask through your most holy name, together with your begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Jesus, you are my Lord. May happiness lies in you alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How are you today, grade 11 students? I hope that you and your loved ones are in good condition. Before we start with our lesson, I want you to get yourself ready and have your learning packet with you. Now that you are ready, let's start with our lesson with a recap about with our lesson number one for the past video. In our lesson number one, we have discussed about the different ways of how representative animals reproduce. Natutunan nyo yung iba, iba't ibang paraan nila para makapag-reproduce using the process of budding, fission, fragmentation and regeneration, and orthogenesis. Now, it is a continuation pa rin ng ating unit number one which is all about perpetuation of life. And our new lesson for this instructional video is all about genetic engineering. Okay? So, familiar ba kayo sa salitang genetics? or sa genetic engineering. Okay? So for this lesson, we have two main objectives. We have describe the process of genetic engineering and second one, evaluate the benefits and risks of using GMOs or genetically modified organisms. Now, genetic engineering is the process of in which genetic material is transferred from one organism to another. So, isa itong paraan muli upang maparami yung organisms by getting one trait from one organism and transferring it to another organism. So, for example, nakikita natin yan sa mga sci-fi movies. Okay? So, kung nare tayo, gusto nating maging malakas. O kaya naman, gusto nating magkaroon ng pakpak. Kukuha kung nare tayo ng uh, ay trait dun sa isang hayop na malakas or may pakpak then isasaksak sa katawan ng tao boom, meron na siyang pakpak may mga ganun, sa Spider-Man kunwari uh, yung taong naging lizard okay, yung taong naging spider nga, di ba? so, sinasaksak lang nila yung traits ng isang organism sa kanilang bodies or sa host and then nagiging uh, nakukuha na nila yung traits na yun okay? pero actually yung genetic engineering it is true to life although sa mga movies uh, yung application sa tao ay medyo impossible pa sa ngayon. But for other organisms, kayang-kaya na ng humans na i-manipulate yung genes ng isang organism, especially yung mga crops or mga plants. Okay, so, paano ba nila ginagawa yung ganong proseso? Okay, so, sa diagram na ito, pinapakita kung paano nangyayari yung genetic engineering. So, kumukuha sila na ito isang step lang or isang method ng genetic engineering. So, kumukuha sila ng plasmid na tinatawag dun sa isang bacteria and then kukuha sila ng gene of interest 
doon sa organism na kukuha na nila. So, for example, um, gagawa sila ng, uh, for example, ah, yung halaman na ganito lang yung size gusto nila is mapalaki. So, kukuha sila sa, for example, sa gene ng nyog, kasi mataas yung nyog, i-apply nila, for example, sa halaman na maliliit lang ng mga shrubs. Okay? O kaya naman, mag-example tayo sa hayo. For example, gusto nila yung um, yung tiger ay nakalilipad. Okay? Nakalilipad na tiger. Flying tiger, for example. Una, kukuha muna sila ng isang sample bacteria. Tapos kukunin nila yung plasmid na tinatawag. Sa plasmid na ito, i-coconnect yung gene or trait na manggagaling sa isang hayop. For example, kukuha sila ng trait sa mga hayop na lumilipad, lumilipad like eagle. So, kunin nila yung trait na yon, ipapasok nila dito sa may plasmid. And then, itatransfer nila yon sa bagong bacterial cell. Ngayon, pararamihan nila yung bacteria na yon para dumami yung bacteria na merong ganong trait. Okay, so far, ulit, ulitin ko ha. Mayroon silang sample bacteria, kukunin nila yung plasmid kung saan itatransfer yung trait. Okay, so, for example, yung trait ng eagle na nakakalipad. So, lilipat doon, ipapasok sa panibagong bacteria. And then, hahayaan nilang dumami yung bacteria na yon And then, magkakaroon na ng mga copies ng gene or trait na yon sa kanila itatransfer doon sa organism na gusto nilang paglagyan nun. So, for example, oh, ilalagay nga nila sa tiger. So, ilal ipapasok nila sa katawan yon para yung magiging trait nung uh, tiger. For example, da ilalagay nila yun sa embryo pa lang, pa lang sa nabuong baby. Okay, kapag napagsama na yung egg cells o sperm cell nung tiger, papasok din nila yung trait na yun para kapag nabuo siya and kapag lumaki siya, magkakaroon siya ng pakpak. Ganun yung simple proseso ng genetic engineering. Kukuha ng host or nung paglalagyan ng trait na tinatawag ng pink plasmid. Then kukunin yung trait ng organism ilalagay doon, doon sa panibagong bacteria, para ramihin tapos itatransfer doon sa target organism. Ganun yung proseso ng genetic engineering. So ito yung mga example ng mga hayop or halaman or prutas or gulay na nag-undergo ng genetic engineering. Una na dyan yung sikat na sikat na kamlong. Dito sa Nueva Ecija actually meron tayo yung na-produce na ganyan by CLSU. So yung kamlong ay pinagsamang kamatis at talong. Okay? So itsura siyang talong pero actually siya ay isang uh, is, sorry, itsura siyang um, kamatis pero actually isa siyang talong. Okay? So that is Kamlong. Okay? Let's see. Neon cat or glow in the dark cat. Actually, hindi lang sa cat siya. May mga ibang hayop din na dinatry nila na yung mga balahibo ay gagawing uh, glow in the dark or neon. May neon lights. Diba? Para madali silang makita sa gabi. Featherless fowl. Okay? Yung manok na paglaki ay wala ng balahibo para hindi na siya babalahibuhan. Okay? Diba? Hunky hog. Okay? Nakaiba yan. Yan yung baboy na hindi magkakaroon ng taba. Puro laman lang. Okay? Kaya ganyan siya. Maselan. Di ba? Nakaiba. Para wala ng taba. Puro laman lang yung mahikita sa baboy. Hunky hog. Okay? Liger. Or pinagsamang tiger and lion. Yung uh, kanyang torso and head ay itsura ng leon and then yung kanyang limbs or yung kanyang lower part ay itsura or galing sa trait ng tiger. Pigoat. Okay? Yung goat na mukhang, kam, uh, na mukhang baboy or baboy na mukhang kambing, hindi ko rin siya ma-determine actually. Kung siya ba ay mostly ay pig or mostly ay goat. Pero it is a combination. Basta siya ay pig and goat. Kaya pig goat. Okay? And ito, uh, eagle tiger. Okay? Yung tiger ang kanyang mukha. Yung sinasabi ko kanina. Pero wala naman siyang pakpak. Ginawa lang yung mukha niya na uh, mukha ng eagle. Okay? So, gano'ng kabagsik yan? Pinagsama ang dalawang malalaking predators. Okay? And then sa GMO fruits or genetically modified organisms fruit. Ito yung mga fruit na galing sa ibang bansa na almost perfect or talagang perfect yung itsura pero actually wala naman talaga yung kung itatanim mo sa likod bahay niyo ang itsura for example yung mga kamatis di ba 
yung kamatis na napopuro sa Pilipinas, wala naman talagang perfect shape. Oh, actually, no? parang konti lang kung meron man. Tapos sa ibang bansa, makikita natin yung mga kamatis nila, perfectly shaped. Ang ganda ng itsura, ganun sa apple. Sa atin, ang mga nakukuha nating apple galing sa Japan, for example, yung mga ano na sa kanila, excess. Hindi siya perfectly shaped kung ano-ano yung hugis. Pero sa Amerika or sa ibang bansa, ang kita nyo, talagang pa-heart shape siya. Okay? Tapos ito din, yung watermelon, ginawang box para hindi daw gumugulong. Okay? Tapos yung sa corn, di ba sa atin, eh, kung magtatanim ka ng corn sa Pilipinas, bibihira lang talaga yung straight tapos malalaki yung, yung mga corns niya, yung grains. Pero sa ibang bansa, dahil genetically modified, is almost perfect yung itsura nila. Okay? Ginagawa din yan sa mga halaman, for example, yung rose. Gusto nila yung ganitong kulay, so iibahin nila yung jeans. For example, dalaway kulay ng rose, gano'n. Pinagsasama nila yung traits para maging kakaiba. May example nga, itong uh, ganyan din sa mga strawberry, iniiba yung kulay para maging iba sa paningin. So, mas mahal na siya. Gano'n, gano'n yung kanilang idea. Okay? Sa so, ganyan yung ginagawa sa genetically modified fruits. Pwede iniiba yung kulay, yung size, yung texture, or yung shape ng isang fruits or nung mga gulay. Okay? But, we have pros and cons of using GMOs or doing or creating genetically modified organisms. Let us first discuss the pros. Ano ba yung naitutulong niya kung sakaling widespread na siya sa atin or sa ibang bansa, meron ba siyang good and bad effects? Okay, so unahin natin yung good effects muna. Okay? Give food desirable trait. Una-una yan. Kasi nga, kung ano yung gusto natin itsura ng food, kung ano yung gusto natin texture niya, lasa niya, laki niya, pwede natin magawa through genetic engineering. Pangalawa, make crops more resistant to diseases as they grow. So, pwede rin i-genetically modify or genetic engineer na hindi sila pwedeng dapuan ng mga peste. Meron silang pest-resistant features sa kanilang uh, composition. Pwede yan. Produce crops that are more nutritious and are tolerant of herbicides. Okay, so, pwede yung mga artificial vitamins isinasaksak sa different gulay or different frutas para mas maging masustansya pa sila. Okay? More variation among animals. So, pwede magkaroon ng iba't iba pang klase ng organism. Mapatuloy pa rin yung lahi nila although in nasa iba silang organism. So, merong variation na nangyayari. Fifth, artificially implanting DNA from one species to another can save many years of research. Okay, so kung i uh, for example, kung kaya na pala natin ma-cure yung cancer using genetic engineering, so hindi na natin kailangan mag-research kung ano dapat yung gawin natin gamot. O kaya naman, yung COVID-19, baka malaman natin na magkaroon tayo ng genetically engineered na uh, characteristics na pwede na siyang labanan agad. Kesa mag-research tayo ng ibang ways, pwede niyang masig through genetic engineering. And sixth, It can be used to manipulate animal cells to become healthier. Yun nga, pwede tayong maging healthy, malakas, and more resistant to disease. So, yun yung isa pang uh, advantage ng pros of GMOs. But, kung titignan nyo kung sobra na yung ganyang pros ng GMOs, it is subjected or pwede siyang masubject sa overuse or parang uh, pag-aabuso, abuse, kung sakaling mayroon tayong mga pros ng GMOs. So, ang mga cons naman ng GMOs or mga bad effects, allergic reactions, okay? So, so sobrang kasi mga chemicals yan eh, may mga pinagdadaanan ng iba't ibang proseso. So, pwedeng mag ng allergic reactions sa mga mag intake Cancer, okay, alam naman natin na yung mga radiation na ini-apply ina dyan, pwede yung mag ng radiation and mag ng cancer. Affect immune system, Okay. So, ganun na nga, pwede maapektuhan yung immune system natin, humina, dahil kain na kain tayo ng mga GMOs. Produce highly unpredictable organisms, okay? Malay ba natin na yung ginawang liger ay mas matapang pa kasi nga pinagsama ng lion and tiger, and then yung eagle and tiger, ba diba? So, hindi natin sila mapepredict kasi bago lang sila. So, pwede magkaroon ng backlash, o kaya ay ng clash, okay? So, yung mga ginagawang organisms, yung baka magkatotoo yung mga nakikita na sci-fi movies, yung mga gano'n. O kaya naman, tayo rin mismo, baka kung in sa human, eh, maghasik ng lagim o kung ano man. Breach of animal and human rights. So, syempre, maraming pinapatay na hayop bago ma-achieve yung isang 
experiment. O paano pa kung sa human na siya i-apply? So, hindi naman pwedeng trial and error doon. Okay, namali ako ng dosage, namatay siya, ganun. Hindi pwede. Dapat lagi eksakto. So, merong paglabag din sa human rights. Lalo na kung ang ginagawa din sa mga hayop pa ay kung endangered or endemic species. So, merong paglabag sa batas. Okay? So, that's it. Ganun lang, simple yung about sa genetically modified organisms. If you want to learn more about our lesson, ito yung pinaka-interesting na topic so far na na-research ko is creating designer babies. Okay? Ito yung iisipin mo na kung ano yung magigitsura ng baby mo bago mo siya ipanganak. Ikaw na mamimili ng kung anong trait ang meron dapat siya. Okay? By designing the baby that you want or the baby that you wish. Okay? So if you want to learn more, watch on your flash drive creating designer babies. Okay? So, values connection. Ito, mahalaga din. Please answer it on your learning packet. As a country with a history of economic, social, psychological dependence and serv servience to other countries, do you think the use of GMOs will be more beneficial or detrimental? Kasi tayo talagang kung ano yung uso, doon tayo sasabay. Kung ano yung in, kung ano yung ginagawa sa ibang bansa, ganyan tayo yung thinking kasi ng mga Filipinos. Sa so, tingin nyo ba, Uh, yung paggamit din na kung gagayahin natin ibang basa na gagamit ng GMOs is magiging beneficial for our country or detrimental. Another one, genetic engineering has been a great theme in most sci-fi movies. Actually, that's true. Integrating special skills to a human body, resistant to most type of diseases, and becoming a perfect, ar perfect archetype of our race has been a dis debate since we've finally decoded our genotype. Scientists are even studying what they call designer babies. Babies form from scratch of what their parents intended to be when they were conceived. As a student born in this advanced world, do you prefer the introduction of genetic engineering to human? And would you like to design your baby or babies would be like in the future? Okay, write your thoughts in our learning packet. So, Talaga naman, sa so, tingin nyo ba, papayag ba kayo na or willing ba kayo na i-design yung baby nyo or magpa-add ng uh, mag genetic engineer sa human? Okay? Write your thoughts about it. Now, it's time for our quiz. Let's check how you understand our lesson but if you still have questions about our topic, pwede nyo akong tawagan or i-text, chat during our consultation time. So, that is 1 to 3.30, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, okay? So, answer activity 3 on your assessment sheets if you are ready to take the assessment. Okay, that's it for our lesson for today. It is all about genetic engineering. I hope you learned well. Happy learning, Ruizians, and God bless.